So uh, let's begin. So as in all meditation, this is not supposed to be something you need to do to get right or to get a certain type of experience or to make yourself a better person. It's not self-improvement. And in particular with metta, it's really all about embracing ourselves just as we are. And that begins with getting the body really comfortable. So really listening into your body to what it's asking from you rather than controlling the body with your mind. And I think anyone who's had chronic illness, including myself, um, understands that, you know, I understood anyway when I got really sick that most of my life I'd been pushing my body around and sort of it would always comply because it was healthy. And suddenly getting chronic illness, the body would no longer do what my mind wanted it to do. And I had to learn to respect the body and let the body lead. So in a similar way, when we start to sit down to practice, see if you can let your body determine how it wants to sit. We might think that sounds strange because the body's not necessarily a sentient being. I mean, without the mind, it would be just a lump of foam, as the Buddha said, <laughs> dead meat and flesh and all sorts of other nasty oozing things. Um, but as long as we inhabit this body, it really is our vehicle for practice and our vehicle to awakening. So we have to bring everything with us on the path. So please get as comfortable as you can. And once you are ready, you can gently close your eyes. Some people like to meditate with their eyes open. And sometimes, especially if a trauma or something difficult arises, you can just gently open your eyes. It can help to bring you back to the moment. But otherwise, it's really nice to close your eyes because it brings you more deeply in contact with your body and the feelings in the body. And just noticing any areas of tightness or tension in the body because that's usually what stands out and maybe just giving them a gentle stretch or stretching your neck rolling your shoulders back maybe loosening up the way you've crossed your legs if you're on the floor sometimes we can cross them a bit tightly or the knees bent too far the ankles could be pressing into the ground or into one another into the shins so giving them space you have the whole room to inhabit so really take that space sensing the ground beneath you holding supporting the heavy weight of this body with ease. Very little muscular effort is needed. And if you are able to straighten the spine a little bit, if that feels good for you right now, just sensing that this frame of the body, the skeletal frame, the spine, is holding all the flesh, the skin, the muscles, enabling them to relax. So wherever you notice tension or holding, just gently invite a sense of letting go. And you can do this with the mind as well. Noticing any area of tightness, pain, discomfort, and just gently expanding the area of your awareness, expanding around that discomfort to take in other sensations as well. Perhaps noticing the lightness of the skin 
or the touch of the clouds. Maybe tingling in the palm of the hands or the top of the head. And allowing these sensations to bring you into this present moment more fully connected to where you are. And just enjoying the simplicity of now. Landing in your body, landing in this present moment. Allowing the past and the future to fade from your mental screen. And I'd like to start the Metta practice by encouraging a sense of gratitude towards yourself, first of all, for offering yourself this moment of peace. For the beautiful, wholesome intentions that brought you here today to meditate, to develop metta, loving kindness in your heart for the sake of the benefit of yourself and all beings, especially those who you're about to meet. And see if you can delight in the beauty of those intentions. And feel grateful for those qualities you have inside. Staying connected to any feelings that arise in relation to that gratitude, that sense of wholesome intention. And wishing yourself well. For some people, it helps to start the loving kindness off by offering a few phrases of loving kindness, well wishes towards yourself. Simple wishes, but genuine wishes for your own well being and health. Such as, may I be happy. May I be free. May I be healed.
may I be at peace. But make these phrases very personal to you, whatever you deeply wish for yourself. It could be health, contentment, freedom from suffering, ease. And offer these phrases as though you are offering yourself a beautiful gift, delighting in the intention. Staying connected to your body and listening to the resonance of each phrase. Allowing the mind to move in that direction, instinctively, organically. Before saying another phrase to yourself. So each phrase is like planting a seed. And that silent, kind awareness in between each phrase is like the sun shining on that little seed, the rain, your kindful awareness, giving that seed space to flourish and grow. Always working very skillfully, like a skillful gardener, tending to the seed. If your mind is distracted or unwholesome thoughts arise, we can replace them with a wholesome thought of loving kindness. Perhaps repeating the phrases fairly regularly to remove those other thoughts from the mind. Or if the mind is quiet and you feel the loving kindness starting to arise, you may spend longer between each phrase just basking in that kindness as though the sun were shining upon you permeating every cell of your body.
before repeating another phrase. If this is healing for you and feels like what you need, you can continue to spread metta to yourself. Or we can open the heart further, staying in contact with any sensations, particularly around the chest, the heart, or anywhere that you feel a sense of ease. And invite in someone whom you have a feeling of gratitude towards. It may be someone like a teacher, a parent or a friend. Perhaps someone who's helped you in some way maybe financially, materially, or even in the Dhamma. The thought of whom brings a smile to your heart. So avoiding anyone whom you feel any sense of complication or complexity toward. Not someone who you feel obliged to return whatever gift they've given you, but someone whom you're just simply grateful for. Maybe as simple as someone who's given you a smile in a time of need. And see if you can imagine them in front of you now. Perhaps their face, their appearance becomes evident to you or maybe more a sense of who they are. How it feels to be around them. And start wishing them well. Once again, using language if it supports the arising of loving kindness for you. The language that's custom made for this being. And embodies your deepest wish for them. Imagining that loving kindness emanating from your body, from your heart and showering this person with love appreciation, a sense of safety and respect. And imagining receiving that loving kindness, relaxing, their face and features softening, their body at ease.
keep on giving, true giving to this being without expecting anything in return. Without expecting to be calm, to feel happy, but just giving for the sake of giving because it's a beautiful thing to do. Not knowing whether this person receives, but just trusting the power of these intentions to heal. And smiling into the eyes, into the heart of this being, gently thank them for giving you the opportunity to give and let them fade from your mind. And bring in someone who you don't know very well. This is the so-called neutral person someone who you don't particularly like or dislike perhaps someone you barely notice but is there maybe cleaning your windows once a month maybe the person in the local shop or a neighbor that you see around but don't think about too much. And seeing if you can tune into a sense of gratitude towards them. Members of our society or community who have their role to play, who suffer like we do. who also experience joy, experience love. And spread loving kindness to them, noticing any experience in the body and the mind. Bringing this person to mind. Wishing them to be well, safe, free from suffering, whatever you'd wish for your very best friend.
now thanking this person too for coming as a visitor to your mind, giving you the opportunity to deepen the loving kindness towards someone you have no vested interests with. Allowing their image to fade as the meta keeps on growing. Noticing the sensations, any feelings associated with loving kindness throughout the body. Maybe nothing particularly stands out, that's fine. But whatever little bit of peace and harmony you've experienced so far, now just allowing that to spread with the wish that may everyone practicing here together, all our friends in the Dhamma, visitors to Anukampa Buddhist Vihara, to everyone in this Zoom room and beyond, all our friends practicing throughout this world. With a feeling of deep gratitude, just allow the metta to flow out. As though the sun were now shining upon us all, indiscriminately, unconditionally. Embracing everyone here with loving kindness. as those feelings of gratitude and loving kindness grow. And to reach all of us, we have to spread that metta in every direction. So imagining that metta spreading out in front of you. As far as it goes. Spreading to all beings in the forward direction. Maybe beings close to you in the same room or in the village, the town. All beings, not only human beings, but also animals, insects, birds. Maybe beings in the River Thames just in front of me right now. If there are some fish at least some algae there. All beings to the front. May they all be happy and well. And the metta spreads from the front to the side, to the right hand side of your body. Just spreading organically, naturally, as far as it will. To whatever beings may be in the direction to your right. May they all be happy. free from suffering. May they all be safe and well. Maybe beings that we can't see, but we can perhaps sense. Invisible beings, beings in other realms. 
the possibility of those beings is enough to send metta their way. And that metta spreads behind you to all beings who may be behind where you're seated right now. Small beings, large beings, human beings, non-human beings, visible beings as well. May all beings in that direction be happy and well. Spreading that matter out toward the left side. So no areas left out. May all beings be happy and well, wherever they may be in that direction. All beings, not only around our body, but also above, up into the skies, maybe birds in the trees, insects, butterflies, maybe other forms of life on other planets, who knows? and all beings below. Perhaps in the ground. In the water, the sea. On the other side of the globe. I guess I'm seated on New Zealand right now, so a meta can flow over there. until this loving kindness encompasses the whole world. And the earth becomes lit up with a golden glow. Imagining that healing power of metta, pacifying fears, healing sicknesses, disease. Bringing peace to the war-torn places, to those beings who live in great fear. May all beings at this moment in time receive our loving kindness, powerful force of combined loving kindness, spread out in all directions across this planet Earth. As though each of us were a little golden light emanating outward, connecting with one another's light as it shines across this whole planet Earth and maybe beyond.
May all beings, all those who breathe, whether they're involved in good actions of body, speech, and mind, or whether they cause great harm for others through ignorance, delusion, nevertheless, may they all be happy and well and experience the deepest peace. Freedom from suffering, freedom from greed, hate and delusion. May all beings be fully liberated, fully enlightened, fully awake. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pogala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariyapana Sabaitiyo Sabay Purisa Sabay Ariya Sabay Anariya Sabe Dewa Sabe Manusa Sabe Vini Padika Awe Rahontu Abya Paja Hontu Ani ga hon tu Suki atanam pari alam tu Dukha munjan tu Yada lada sambhadito Maui gajan tu Kama saka So allowing the energy of loving kindness to just drench your body once again, bringing you back into your body, into this room, wherever you're seated. Once again, just appreciating your practice that you came here and that you tried. Whatever you imagine the results to be, it'll be something different. So, but you can be sure that it'll be good. Wherever a wholesome intention is made, the law of nature has it that the results have to bear fruit in positive ways. So with that gladness, that happy thought in mind, when you're ready, you can open your eyes with a smile to end the meditation. You can carry on too if you wish. <laughs> mm, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I hope you also did. So we still have 10 minutes and uh, sometimes we do have a little discussion at this point. I'll have to be uh, a little bit on time today because we have uh, a big family actually. I think several families 
uh, I think they're Sri Lankan, I'm not sure if everyone is, but uh, eight adults and five children to add to the three already here. <laughs> or maybe we're the three children, I don't know <laughs> quite how many adults and children, but um, I think it's kind of the same. So uh, it's the first really big dana we have today. We told them that they'll have to bring some cushions and plates because <laughs> we only have a small place. But uh, if this many keep coming, then of course we have to do some serious fundraising to get a bigger place. <laughs> yeah, so that's happening soon. But are there any comments or reflections that people would like to make? It's always nice to hear from you and uh, your video won't be recorded, only your voice. Otherwise, you can leave messages in the box. And please don't feel shy or ashamed if you, the meta didn't happen for you or you didn't get the results you foolishly expected, I should say, because <laughs> it's not about results with meta practices in particular. It's just about that wish to give. So sometimes people are a bit quiet in the beginning and after a while it becomes there's so many things people wish to say. So, but it's okay either way. You can raise your virtual hand if you have one. Or write in the box or just be still. I'm curious as well. Oh, here we go. All right. I won't ask you anything. Can we uh, unmute Seb, please? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. I just I wanted to say, um, yeah, I felt a lot of kind of body tingles during the meta practice. Um, there was one, although one point I felt kind of restless like I wanted to go make a cup of tea <laughs> but then uh, that kind of drifted away and then when kind of felt yeah a lot of tingles and really positive feelings throughout my body so thank you <laughs> it's all great you know whether it's tingles or tea <laughs> <laughs> it's all good to notice the way our minds work and you know the effect yeah. of certain attitudes certain practices on our mind that's what we're here to learn most of all so wisdom you know is part of the practice whatever the experience we're learning about our minds so yeah great and just as in any practice these hindrances do come up of course um, wanting to have a cup of tea it's uh, negligible isn't it is that a restlessness or is it matter to your your um i don't know we're english so you know <laughs> there could be some matter involved there but yeah, restlessness arises in practice, no matter what type it is. But it's great that you managed to, uh, yeah, stay connected with the practice. And uh, I wasn't watching you, but perhaps you didn't go for tea. <laughs> <laughs> I did lie down on the ground, though. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Especially important for anyone who doesn't have tingly feelings and whose body starts to ache. So lying on the ground is lovely can give you that rest that you really need so someone else did briefly raise their hand i don't know if they've uh, changed their mind did kaz raise her hand no paul um i, I was uh when i was doing meta i i had a bump in my car this week and i bumped into this lady on the roundabout and i've never had an accident before and um Anyway, I, I was expecting the worst and we went around the corner and she had a, a dash cam and she looked quite angry and at first, but then we both got out of the car and um, there was no damage. There was no damage at all on either car. It's amazing. I was thinking, God, the technology is great nowadays in cars. And um, anyway, it was, something really bad happened, but then we were both laughing about it and we were joking and we were complaining about the roundabout always being so busy. and. And then I was going to visit an old, uh, a 90 year old chap at home. And uh, I told him the story of the bump and uh, I thought he was going to pass out from laughing so much. So um, I was thinking of that in, in my meta is, is um, something really bad happened. Yeah. And then all this warmth came out of it. So I was trying to get that um, trying to, you know, cause I was, I was thinking of that and I was thinking that I was doing the meta of the lady and uh who i bumped into and it was really nice oh so um 
yeah so something bad can come out but a lot can come out of good with the meta and it's just basic meta in the world you know the meta for the car being not broken and the meta of the nice person I bumped into and the old chap so it was um yeah it was lovely thank you thanks for sharing that that sounds really nice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. how we have the power to transform what we initially perceive to be negative we're very quick to judge huh and mm. then <laughs> just leaving that little space open in the mind you know to mm. to actually add some kindness there so yeah beautiful that's so nice and then it can actually be a source of meta practice later on as well so <laughs> that's lovely thanks for sharing does Richard have a question or I think you put a comment didn't you but I haven't read it out Sh do you want to speak shall we ask you to unmute yes um yes I'm um, sort of animal yes I mean myself I find very good meta practices it's actually going on my local bus it's a local bus I get on to West Hampstead you know, quite regularly. And it's a certain road which is not designed for buses. So it goes really over this bus, over these lumps, and it's incredibly frustrating for everybody in the bus, including myself, and drives everybody absolutely nuts. So I find it's really good practice, actually, because it, literally I have no choice at all either to start screaming my head off or to simply to start practicing meta towards the bus, towards the road, and towards nice. myself, and to basically, you know, shut up myself and practice some um, meta. So in a way, it's like, um, you know, it's like a sort of reality check and uh, helps me to, you know, come back into the here and now. So actually, in a way, I found that over a period of time, being in the area now, about a year it's actually very good practice mm -hmm. to practice matter Great. so I'm practicing love and kindness to the bus and the road yeah. <laughs> I like that because it is possible to practice loving kindness towards inanimate things and also to situations right so it might yes. not be like any one person um's fault or you know any one person that's necessarily we don't know how they all feel but the situation in general which is beyond anyone's control uh, we can have meta to that as well. And I think it's really beautiful what both you and Paul just mentioned is that um, out of suffering, we have this incentive in a sense to practice more loving kindness. Yes. And that really, to me, is how right view into suffering can lead to right intention. And that that is sequential in the noble path, you know, from right view, from an understanding of suffering. And obviously, the more direct that experience is, the more powerful and pertinent to us from that right view if we can you know develop right intention then we're really on the path suffering is actually propelling us the right way towards an end of suffering so that's really great yeah <laughs> okay i'm gonna just read out uh make sure everybody's question gets thank you for this and the new year retreat i really wanted to see dhamma friends in person again hence the trek from estonia to sheffield and i had such a nourishing time yay i'm glad you could come uh, thank you very much. It was a beautiful time. A lot of smiles, joy and love, yet very peaceful too. That's wonderful. Uh, that one was from Richard about the frustration and anger. So, of course, the meta is an antidote to that. Thank you for nurturing our seeds and showering the whole world with loving kindness. I think that's you doing that. <laughs> it's our combined practice. So relaxed, even though the medita even through the meditation, there were 13 teenagers having a birthday party next door with huge banging noises. The meta was directed towards them at this point, which soothed the ag agitation. I then felt happy that they were having fun. <laughs> That's so great, isn't it? Like that change in perception through the loving kindness that we can actually, rather than be irritated, be happy for their happiness. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, it's really a powerful source of insight meta practice because it can show you just how malleable perception really is. Uh, the world looks very different through the eyes of meta than through the eyes of maybe a lack of sleep or, you know, irritability. We see everything in a with a negative tinge. Uh, okay, so other people thanking as well. Everyone can read those comments and. Uh, yeah lovely to hear from you all and to to practice together i'm trying to remember what next week is like saturday the what what is the date next year next week because i'd really like to do another but i'm not sure i have a space in my schedule <laughs> uh 
If anyone can help? Co-hosts, what's the date next week you speak? 28th, okay. 28th, 28th, 28th. Oh, no, I can't. I'm teaching in Oxford. Yeah, I'm teaching in Oxford. But you can join the day retreat. I think there's still some places online. It's the soft mind. So basically meta, isn't it, really? But a few more nuances there as well. Great. Oh, and Karen's cat received some meta from Seb as well. That's nice. <laughs> meta to you and your cat, Karen. And yeah, nice to see you back, Karen. Karen's been part of this project since the very beginning. So <laughs> lovely to have you here today. Okay, so shall we end the session just with lots of gratitude for myself because uh, I really feel very blessed to have a lovely community, even though it's mostly online. But actually, even if it wasn't, you know, I'd still want to do the online because it's just such a lovely experience to, to meet together across countries, you know, even across to the other side of the world. <laughs> Kaz is coming in from Adelaide, so it's really, it is spanning the globe. So, did you want me hope... to say something quickly oh, about okay, Dana? Okay, okay, okay. Venerable. A I couple more minutes if you have them. Because I'm very slow. Um, just to say that this uh, session's been as always, has been freely given. And I think we all have much gratitude to Venerable Chanda. And she lives on, uh, she doesn't receive anything for this apart from Dana. So if people want to uh, generously contribute, I think um, Minori's put um, the link in the chat. Thank you, Minori. There are two WhatsApp groups, one for offering food, uh, if there's been no donor offered that day and one for offering hands on help. So if you email that, um, if you email the team at Anno Camper Project, uh, and if you want to join the WhatsApp group, Attention Alley, A L I, and that's it. So, or you can give, uh, you can give food or you can give uh, financial uh, uh, help at uh, the uh, donate at a, at the Anukampa website. So, uh, yeah, so I think that, that's it. But I think <laughs> gratitude, uh, it's lovely to give Dana if we can. So thank you so much, Anna. Okay, I've put the acronyms in there, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anukampa food at the ready or hands at the ready. So it's like, say, if there's nothing yeah. here and um, we need something, you can just drop a line to Ali at team at Anukampa project, but, or you can get on the WhatsApp group and then there's no pressure on anyone because we just send a message if something's needed. I often don't use it, I must say, but it might be useful to, to make use of that as the community grows. So um, that's just one more way. So I think, uh, I actually think our visitors have arrived <laughs> for lunch or it could be the post. So I will bid you farewell and we can unmute and wave goodbye. <laughs>